Hello everyone, welcome to the RP Games YouTube channel. My name is Ralph and this is Firewatch. Firewatch was released in 2016 by Campo Santo. First time I saw this game was on the YouTube channel of Christopher Ott. If you, if you really like story-based games or you like XCOM, then definitely check out uh, Christopher Ott's YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. He's easily my favorite YouTuber and that is because we both like these story heavy games. So I saw this, I saw the first episode of his, of his Let's Play on his channel and I thought okay I, I need to stop watching because I want to play this game. So um, the fact that we like the same games kind of sucks because I never get to watch his uh, complete Let's Plays because I always want to play the game myself. But anyway, uh, this is Firewatch and we are going to jump into a new game. In this game we play Henry, a man who has withdrawn into the Wyoming wilds in 1989. However, we're gonna start off in Boulder, Colorado in 1975 it seems. You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s. Laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. Well, I approach her. You are drunk, I see. So, uh, what's your, uh, you know, major? You slur the word major and it smells like cores. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. Yeah, that's original. Way to go, Henry. Cool. What's yours? She asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology. <laughs> I like Julia already. Was that a burn? I ask. She says definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Oh well, that went fast. So maybe that works, huh? Walking up to a woman and saying, hey, what's your major? And being drunk and then split a cheeseburger and there you go. Okay, so there is a backpack, which I'm gonna put on my back. And we are in an elevator shaft. And there seems to be just one car. I'm assuming that's my car. There's something here that we can... Uh... You can tell I'm... Uh normally playing role-playing games because I'm looking for stuff to loot. Okay, let's uh, let's see if we can loot the car. Oh yeah, we can. Put that backpack in the back there. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. I love that. You move in, you share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck, study toxicology together. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. Okay, I can dig that. There is a scruffy undersized beagle 
Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Well, I um, I I'm gonna choose the Beagle here, and uh, Julia is gonna name him Bucket. What's up, Bucket? Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Oh. Julia loves him. What what about me? Julia, do you still love me? I love Bucket too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m. and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Uh-oh, is what I think. Kids? They're not very smart, <laughs> or good that much. Saying if you and I have some, couple little idiots. Hmm, huh. that would be pretty good. Or one day, why rush? Yeah, well, we just got a dog, you know. Like one day, why rush? She looks away out towards the mountains. We have plenty of time, right? Speak for yourself, mister. Don't worry, I assure her. You tell her she has the body of an undergrad. <laughs> okay. My ovaries didn't get the memo, she says, laughing it off. One day, okay? Okay, one day, she says. Six months later, you get engaged, lying in bed on a Sunday morning. And we are, I'm assuming, going towards the uh, thoroughfare trailhead. Do not forget to check in. You're in their country, learn to live with bears. Uh oh. I'm getting a bit worried already. Uh, fireworks are not allowed. Okay, that's fine. There is a, uh, there's a mailbox. And uh, the fence is open, so. Let's uh, walk right inside. And. Game looks beautiful, by the way. 1980, or one year later. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. You get mad or you ignore her. Hmm. Well... What to do, huh? What would I do? Oh, I don't know. Would I get mad? Let's get mad. Her. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. Whoa. Henry. Mind your language, huh? She tells you to fuck yourself and to not be such a baby. Yeah, she's totally right. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. 1981, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plans from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. I... Frolic like a Victoria's Secrets model. Yeah, that, that's totally me. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jumping down. Okay, what did we jump off of? What? Okay, a bit of a daredevil this Henry, it seems. 
Look at that. The now watch me get eaten by a bear in a few seconds. What's up here? Two forks, fire, lookout. Okay, I think that's where I need to go. Spacebar to climb over obstructions. Oh, very good, Henry. Looking into the sun. It's 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from far away places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Uh oh. Bucket gets kicked. Buh, 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 fuck dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. You scare him away or you beat his goddamn. Well, hey, I'm gonna teach you to uh, rob me and my girlfriend here. You, I beat his goddamn face in. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. It's 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Well, I don't want to hold her back, you know. It's a great opportunity, so I'm not going to try and convince her to not take the job. So, I'll agree if she commutes back and forth. It's not ideal either. So I ask if she'll commute back and forth, you don't want to move to Connecticut? She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up, if that's what she wants. She agrees, she flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Hmm. Julia is sent home from Yale in 1985 on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. Uh oh. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it? Or you make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it? Well, no, I think we should, you know, deal with this. Let's, uh, let's talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. Ooh. It's gonna be that kind of a story, huh? You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Let's pick up my journal. Oh yeah, there's uh, me. <laughs> Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later she goes back to the university. In 1987, Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class, her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days, you get a stranger. She pulls you into the bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad's at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. 
but she gets worse. In 1988, you spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else. Somewhere with 24 hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. Ooh, man, that is rough. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take care of her myself. Wow. Okay. It's uh, not a very uplifting story so far, but um, the game looks amazing look at that beautiful oh 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 don't fall don't fall okay oh there's a deer hey buddy <laughs> it's impossibly hard the worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her. She can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck. Watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter. Drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. <sighs> wow, really? Put a chair in front of the bedroom door? I trust that she sleeps like a rock? I don't know, it's dangerous. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila the bartender everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1am a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. 1989, one night you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a dot 10 and are taken to jail for the night. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue, you say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by, summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Wait, we're not gonna visit? Enter the lookout tower. Okay, there's a light flashing there, it seems. It took us quite a while to get here. Look at that beautiful moon, the stars. Yeah, I could spend some time here. Is there some star patterns we can recognize, maybe? I don't know. If anyone sees the. Uh, so called the big bear or the small bear, let me know. Okay, we've got plenty of time to look for uh, stars. Says, uh, I forgot I was afraid of heights. Ooh, another floor up. Oh boy. Yeah, don't get too close to the edge there, Henry. No bears around the corner, okay. 
Turn on the power. Hey, there's light. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Hey. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Uh, left shift. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great <laughs> idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... Like, sleep? Forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Let's see... Uh, you're rebelling against mom. Okay, um, you're probably just rebelling against a mom who wishes you had given her grandkids by the sound of your voice at least 15 years ago. Wow. You come out here and it really grinds her gears and you love it. Can I sleep now? <laughs> She also says I fuck immature men, but in my defense, who wouldn't want a 28-year-old with ambition and energy and some fire in his belly in bed? Me. I'm going now. <laughs> Just a second. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh. Is that it? Close. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Uh, so I cannot do this yet. Pick up. Oh no, okay, I have to... I have to do that first, okay. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Ooh. Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's what, 6? Six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it, that hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing, um... You, uh, you use this to... Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Where is west? Oh, Where's use N to use fireworks? the compass. I need you to confirm. Do you One see One second, jeez. Oh, yeah, there is. Damn. Whoa. That's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Do you think you can handle that? Do I write him a ticket? Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Secure. Shut up. I'm going to end the episode now before we go there and write the uh, tickets. I'm assuming from the distance that it's going to take a while to get there. So I'm going to be doing that in the second episode. I am 
super excited to be playing this game it looks really really beautiful can't wait for episode 2 i hope you agree with me if you've enjoyed that please hit the like button critically hit the subscribe button as well if you want to follow along and thank you very much for watching see you in the next video